In this video, I want to walk you through step by step of how I painted this lemon. As usual, I start with a drawing on the canvas. I'm working from life. I have a picture of my setup there on the right, as well as the poster study that I did. I'm not exactly sure where I want to place the lemon at first, so I'm kind of moving it around here on the drawing. Um, it's not good. It's not super confident, so this is not a drawing I was super proud of. Luckily, it's going to be painted over. But in general, I want to have a very clear drawing that I'm working from with nice, confident lines. And I was moving around a lot here to try to find my object. So in a sense, the drawing did serve its purpose, but would have rather it gone smoother. So with the drawing complete, I move on to start laying in the first colors on the final painting. And I'm just starting along the edge here of the lemon. And I put in a little bit of the background to check my values. And I'm just going to focus and work slowly on just getting this edge working. And then I'll try to turn it into the lightmost facing plane. So when I'm mixing, I'm mostly using a, a mixture of yellow, a little bit of raw umber to uh, dull it and then I'll add in a little bit of burnt sienna or a little bit of cadmium red to increase the chroma and that'll just make a more rich color than say if I was using yellow straight from the tube. I try to never use colors straight from the tube. I think that looks terrible. I always mix something into my colors. It felt like along the edge of the lemon, I was kind of seeing this like more orangey color and I wanted to like push that and sort of exaggerate that a little bit in my final painting. So I was thinking about that a lot while I was working on this edge. Like I'm going to get the value down and I'm going to work that orange in. Right here I'm painting in that sort of exaggerated orangey color and I'm going to paint it in everywhere that it makes sense just to unify it and make sure I'm like selling the effect and I think you're not even going to notice it in the final piece, but it's going to make all the other yellow around it just shine that much brighter. And I think this orange is going to really set up that lightmost facing yellow plane. It's just going to make that high chroma yellow shine all the more brighter if the area around it has also been exaggerated a bit in chroma. Once I get these main forms down, the edges turning into the lightmost facing plane and then the lightmost facing plane turning into the terminator and the shadow side, then I can start adding in the surface detail and I consider highlights a part of the surface detail, but I'll usually put those in first because there's the added issue of the highlights being the brightest part of the object. So I wanna make sure I get those in so I can check if all my values are working first. And then from there, I'll go on and add in all the little bumps and little like scratches that I see and the secondary highlights and all that fun little detailing. And this shadow side is almost straight uh, cadmium yellow with raw umber. It wasn't that complex a mixture and it seemed to work pretty good. It was this just sort of darkened greenish tint of the yellow. The surface is a lot of bumps, so this is a broken highlight, and the way I deal with this is I start at where the sort of center of the highlight is, and I radiate it, at it outwards. As I continue painting, the paint on my brush will sort of mix with the paint on the surface already, and that will naturally darken it, and that's just like a direct painting trick to quickly get a bunch of different values down. Over here on the right side of the lemon, it has a very unique surface. It has a bunch of medium sized bumps and it has a very distinct shape. So I start by breaking it down into the main shadows and the main shapes and I will continue to refine it as I render this lemon. Getting these shapes down was a little bit awkward at first and I had to paint and repaint until I felt like I was representing the object in an elegant manner. This sometimes happens with awkwardly shaped objects where you just gotta paint and repaint until you find something that looks good. And just in general, I try to be very critical of everything while I'm working and just as soon as I put a mark down, like kind of second guessing it and seeing if I need to go back and redo it. And this is a very satisfying way of working for me because I can appreciate the good stuff and if there is some bad stuff, you know, I know I need to like go back in and like redo it. So here we are adding in the reflected light along the bottom edge of the lemon and this reflected light just has to do with the plate which I'll paint in later on. It sort of has this patterning that blocks out the light on either side except for the direct center of the bottom of the lemon and that was kind of intentional. I put the lemon in the middle of the plate and then I saw that light effect and I was like, oh cool, let's keep that in and you know, let's not like move the lemon and 
I think it's just important to play with your setup at the start and just, uh, you know, try to create like some interesting moment like that. And as I finish up the left side of the lemon here, I can move on towards the little detailing phase and all the fun little scratches and bumps and, you know, giving it that final push. And it's important when I'm adding detail not to blur anything, I'm just adding more so I'm keeping any sort of like plane changes sharp and clear. I'm not making my values fuzzy or messed up. There's still shadow next to shadow, light next to light, except these changes are just a lot smaller now on scale. And just for example here, to make a scratch, I'll put down a sort of light highlight. I'll add the dark side of the scratch, and then I'll blur that into the main uh, light side of the lemon. And that's the fundamental element to all this painting is getting that light and dark value working first and then you could play with shape, color, etc. And I just want to point out at the end here how I stayed very far away from white in the lemon. There's no white highlights. We still have a lot of the value range to work with. And that will come in handy later as we get onto the plate because the highlights on the plate were way brighter than the highlights on the lemon. And it's important when you're for starting the painting to look at your setup and think, all right, what are the brightest highlights? What are the darker highlights? And establish that hierarchy. And when painting the ceramic object, you know, it has a pattern on top that I'm going to get to later, but it needs to read as a form even without that pattern. And if it does that, I know that I did an accurate job and I keep pushing it until it reads just fine without the patterning. And then I'll go in and add the patterning on top. And I continue to make refinements until I think the plate is good. I finish the background and then I could finally do the patterning. So this is a pretty slow process. I would put down a line sometimes and I would take the color of the plate and then I would subtractively go back into it. It was a pretty new experience painting this sort of detail. I usually just try to imply things, but at this size I couldn't get away from it. I would go over these lines over and over until I found them to be crisp, and it wasn't really about getting a spontaneous brush mark, but really a refined edge. I didn't really have any drawing to guide me, so I just had to make proportion judgments based on where the lemon was. Luckily the lemon had a pretty distinct shape, so I knew for example this vine was coming out of the vertice of that bottom edge. After getting that first mark down, everything can kind of be compared to where that first find was and I could keep building up a repertoire of marks that could inform me where the next mark was going to be. And while I was painting this, I couldn't help but notice I had gone a little bit too dark on the reflected light side of the lemon and I go back and enlighten it. And as soon as I did that, I couldn't help but feel I had like ruined it, like it was flattening somehow in front of me. But I just had to kind of trust what I was seeing optically and try to go back and make the corrections I could. So. I know the core shadow has to go down a little bit now, and I also wanted to increase the chroma of that reflected light, and I was trying the orange, so I go back and forth with that a bit at the end. So it would be super boring and repetitive if I commentated every single vine like this, so we're just going to go into super speed mode and just speed up through the video footage. Sometimes I'd make an error and I'd have to repaint the plate over it. Um, when I got to the edge here, I had to really paint optically because I had no idea what was going on. So I just kind of like copied the sort of like blurred marks I saw. I'm kind of like looking down at a slope. When I got underneath the lemon, uh, the left side was fine, but then I struggled quite a bit getting the right side down. It just had a different pattern. Also at this point, I noticed the pattern wasn't actually symmetrical. And I was kind of just like, huh, because I had assumed it was a symmetrical pattern. I hadn't really looked carefully at it until I got to this point in the painting. One last little trick in my bag here, I ended up darkening that slope facing us that we're looking down at. Um, darkening as in the shade of the ceramic underneath, just because I knew that would make it read more as a slope. And even though that wasn't optically what I was seeing, just conceptually by darkening it, it makes it read more as a steeper slope. And finally, we've traversed the entire plate and gotten the whole pattern in. In this final stage of the painting, it's all about just stepping back and seeing if there's any final thing you want to change. I think I added in extra vine really quick and that was pretty much it.
So I just wanted to give you guys a big thanks for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you again soon.